Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game uh, from the Pro Chess League. It's a game between Magnus Carlsen and Vidit Gujarati, the, the bros are facing the yogis and uh, it's a, a game where uh, Magnus sees pretty much all the top moves except the ones involving the dark square bishop. It's a true case of a, a very, very mysterious uh, condition in chess known as the bishop of blindness and here you will uh, see it in action. So let's check it out. Magnus opens with pawn to b3, uh, he goes for the Nimso Larsen attack. We have pawn to d5 uh, and now bishop to b2. We have pawn to c5, we have e3 and now pawn to a6. So very standard stuff of the Nimso Larsen attack. This is the classical way to play this. And before we check it out, uh, I would just like to mention that a few videos ago, I, um, I mentioned that Mateusz Jurjak uh, created a, sort of a, a search repository for my uh, channel. There are over 3000 videos that you can uh, search uh, from. And uh, just to give you guys uh, an example, uh, 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 this is it. I don't know if you've seen it in the previous video. So you can search by uh, by outcome, by uh, who played uh, what, by by why, what opening was played. You can even search by playing the actual moves, like you can move the pieces here, uh, e4, e5, and it will find you all the videos containing um, uh, those. Uh, uh, the, the, those moves but uh, now he added something even more special look at this you can write let's say Magnus Carlsen you you say okay show me Carlsen games but now you also say uh, show me Carlsen games where white played pawn to b4 and you check this and then it gives you all the games where Magnus Carlsen uh, played uh, and uh, in, uh, the, in uh, the games where white actually played e4 doesn't really matter if Magnus was white or black uh, but white has played e4 uh, b4 in those uh, games and I've made 244 such videos so absolutely incredible and uh, now if you guys are interested in all the games where uh, b4 was played you can now actually uh, check that out so just wanted to, uh, to mention that so very nicely added by by Mateusz uh, hope you enjoyed that as well now getting back to the game uh, we have knight to f3 by Magnus knight to c6 we have pawn to d4 and now knight to f6 we have d captures on c5 already a very rare position pawn to e6 with it preparing to capture back on c5 we have a3 bishop captures on c4 uh, c5 and now pawn to b4 now this game uh, once I upload it will also be added to that library where all the games were before uh, was played. Uh, we have bishop to a7, and now there are some games where pawn to c4 was played, but here we have knight b to d2 by Magnus, and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So, Vidit castles, and now pawn to c4. Of course, it makes sense, you do not want a backwards pawn on c2, and you want to attack black strong center. D captures, knight captures, offering a queen trade, and just pawn to b5, chases away the knight. Knight to d6, Magnus avoids a queen trade, at least for the moment, and now bishop to d7, and now bishop to d3. An excellent square for the bishop. Uh, queen to e7, attacking the knight, and here Magnus just castles and blunders a full piece here. Of course, that is a joke. If uh, Vidit were to capture the knight, then just bishop captures on h7, blunders the queen. So I imagine all of you saw that. Uh, so instead, knight to d5. Now this definitely is a threat. And knight back to e4. We have rook f to d8, aligning the rook nicely with the white queen. Rook to c1, and now bishop to e8. And now, okay, it's time to... Uh, move the queen, you don't want to overstay your welcome, queen to e2, now pawn to h6, that g5 square really uh, looks like uh, like a white knight will claim it, so uh, it has to ruin his king side at least a little bit, and you don't want to uh, play just uh, any pawn move like g6 or h6, because those bishops are just, uh, that's a weird arrow, those bishops are just exceptionally strong. So here we have rook f to d1, uh, and now rook a to c8, both uh, players have fully mobilized their pieces, we have pawn to h3, uh, creating some breathing room for the white king and now bishop to b6 which is uh, uh, interestingly one of the engine top moves uh, I have no idea what it does uh, I, I always imagined the bishop should go to b8 to claim this diagonal and then maybe somehow you you also try to checkmate the white king but maybe it, it's with the same idea like b6 okay you add, add some, uh, additional support to d8 but also maybe the bishop is coming to c7 so uh uh, Vidit uh, does play what the engine uh, says Vidit should play. We have knight to g3, 
Now comes knight to f6 and now bishop to b1, a standard um, uh, bishop maneuver and this is now a position of infinite potential. You can uh, play this so many different ways but basically white will at some point try to uh, trade his knight for, uh, for knight, the knight on f6 to get his queen to c2 or d3 and somehow try to either checkmate the black king or force Vidit to create even more weaknesses. So rook captures on d1, Vidit wants to trade material, rook captures, rook captures and rook to d8. Magnus plays rook back to c1, he wants to keep the material on the board, and now king to f8. At least, um, uh, you know, that queen h7 will not come with tempo, and now knight to e4. Like I said, uh, it's time to remove that uh, knight from f6. We have knight to d5, with it avoids the trade, and now knight to c3. Again, offering the trade, and again, knight to f6, avoiding the trade. We have queen to c2, now preparing knight to e4, and queen to h7, and rook to c8. We have knight to e4, and with it again goes knight to d5, uh, de declines the trade, but now Magnus finds the very strong knight to c5, and the problem is uh, you will lose that a6 pawn, and also queen to h7 is coming, and um, there's really no good way to play this, uh, b best way you can play this is play knight back to f6, and then you just give up the... Uh, the a6 pawn, but with it accepted the challenge, he played bishop captures on c5, and now comes queen to h7. So okay, with it is up a piece for the moment, but checkmate is being threatened. Queen to h8 will be checkmate. Uh, the problem is, uh, here Magnus actually... Uh, <laughs> Uh, queen h7 is a fine move, but he actually missed uh, the title of the video here, which is a uh, 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 mate in three. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the maneuver that Magnus missed here in this position uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that first we sacrifice the bishop and then it's checkmate. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop captures on g7. Uh, there's nothing for you to do if king j8, queen to h7 is checkmate. And if you capture on g7, then just queen to h7, check king to f6. And now either queen captures on h6 or queen to h8 is checkmate as the knight covers g5 and the bishop and queen are completely controlling the diagonals. So this is what what Magnus missed. And okay, he played queen to h7, it's the second best move, it also wins the game, but you have to play it uh, uh, to absolute perfection. So pawn to f6, uh, now uh, giving the df7 square to the black king, and now Magnus goes queen to h8 with check. We have king f7, and now he just wins back material. Rook captures on c5, and now queen to b7, allowing the black king to start running uh, towards the queen side, we have pawn to e4 attacking the knight and the knight to f4. And now, uh, again, we um, see this mysterious uh, condition uh, known as the bishop blindness. Magnus again has a completely winning maneuver, uh, but he misses it. Uh, the completely winning maneuver is now bishop captures on f6. And it, it works because if g captures just queen to h7 check and you blunder the black queen on b7. And if you capture with the king, either, uh, otherwise you, you're just gonna uh, face queen captures on g7. So king captures and now look at this, queen to f8 with check, queen to f7 and now this sensational pawn to e5 check which opens up the light square bishop. And the only move you have here is knight captures on e5. But now that you are forced to play this, the rook on c8 is undefended, you just trade and go into a completely winning endgame. Queen captures, bishop captures, you're gonna capture on c8. Okay, black will win a pawn here, captures, 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 but after let's say something like this, um, yeah, okay, you're down a pawn, but you're up, uh, you, you have a rook for, for a knight, of course, this is completely winning. However, Magnus misses it again. After this knight to f4 move, Magnus plays queen to h7, and now Vidit plays knight to e7, which is uh, the absolute strongest move, and it, it, the uh, this move stops all of white's ideas. Now, you don't have bishop captures on f6 because king captures and the knight here is just a beautiful defender. Otherwise, okay, you might have some rook f5 check ideas, but uh, with the knight here, none of uh, such ideas are possible. So here, Magnus tries knight to e5 check as there are... Uh, no more ways to break through, and Vidit accepts. F captures on e5, we have bishop captures on e5 threatening the g7 pawn, 
knight to h5 defending and now pawn to g4 threatening to kick away the knight and play queen captures and g7 checkmate but Vidit was prepared for this rook captures and c5 now okay if you capture the knight then the bishop hangs so you have to recapture on c5 and now just knight to f6 we have bishop captures king captures and now magnus plays pawn to g5 with check he still has the bishop and the queen uh, but uh, all in all he is down down a piece h captures on g5 now pawn to e5 check freeing up the light square bishops diagonal king to f7 and queen to h5 with check with king to f8 only move uh, that um, uh, uh, keeps giving with it a, a winning position queen captures on g5 and now queen to f3 uh, bringing the queen uh, to help out with the defense and now we have queen to g4 offering a queen trade but just bishop to c6 this is how vidit forces the trade as checkmate is being threatened so queen captures bishop captures and now king to h2 uh, magnus should resign this uh it's equal material uh if you only look at pawns but if you look at pieces then you see that vidit is up a full knight and this is resigns uh but both players are very low on the clock i think vidit was around 10 seconds on the clock magnus uh, maybe 30 seconds or even a full minute uh, but still uh, up a piece you have increment uh, you're not going to lose this so here knight to c6 with king to g3 bishop to d5 pawn to f4 with king to e7 and now king to f2 with knight to a5 pawn to h4 and now just knight to c4 the pawn on a3 cannot be defended uh we have bishop to d3 knight captures on a3 now with it even grabs a pawn king e3 we have pawn to a5 and now king to d4 we have bishop to c6 and now pawn to h5 magnus is pushing those pawns uh there's just no way to actually break through here this pawn is on a dark square so you don't really care what white does pawn to b4 uh, we have pawn to f5 captures captures uh and now pawn to a4 we have pawn to e6 again no way to break through the dark squares uh pawn to b3 king to c3 and now just knight to b5 with check king to b4 and now knight to d4 and it was in this position on move 58 uh, that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here once you make a move as the bishop is attacked also you uh, have to keep the bishop on this diagonal to cover b1 otherwise just uh, b2 b1 queen so you have to move the bishop somewhere but then you blunder the uh, not blunder but you have to give up d6 pawn now you're, you're down too much material you have nothing here and it's it would be just pointless to continue so of course after knight to d4 Magnus resigned and a wonderful victory for uh, Vidit Gujarati in the in the uh, final round of the clash between the the bras and the yogis so really incredible where magnus uh, uh he he really had everything and it was uh, it was all, all over he, he he set it up very nicely with the with with the bishop pair here and he uh had the attack everything was perfectly fine and then with it although he could have defended maybe with knight to f6 it would still be hard but after bishop captures on c6 he just allows magnus uh, a forced mate in three uh which magnus um which Magnus missed, uh, but uh, uh, this or this. Uh, and then uh, we said the the other time here after this knight to f4 move was played again bishop captures on f6 magnus misses it again so uh incredible that um uh, twice in one game you would uh, you would miss um, uh, a, a, a capture with this dark square bishop uh, but that's why i call it the 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 case of of the bishop blindness the the bb uh so yeah uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Savage Vina here, Joyce Roseman, Lars Tissemann, uh, Tomasz Kovusha, and Philip Maltos for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Pro Chess League and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do check out the repository. First link in the description below. You can check out all the games where B4 was played. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.